Great. Because there were um, this is this is the new funky technology I learned about recording it, and then if people couldn't join, they can just click on the link and watch it later on. So okay. that's as that's as high tech as we are right now. So thanks guys for bearing with me. <laughs> thanks for getting us on. No problem. The last course when we did this, there were so many technical issues and, and just the folks can that were. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you now. Yep. I see palm trees in the background. That's getting me excited. <laughs> the, so the folks that were in the group last time, we had trouble technology-wise with some of them. So we finally got the group Google Hangout going in like week six. So I decided with you guys, like we're going to start this going right off the bat and see what we can do. So I do. Uh, I appreciate your patience. I think 18 minutes into the call to get everybody on is not a bad thing. No, it's good. All right, so um, what I want to do, and I'm not going to hold you past 9 o'clock, but what I wanted to do tonight was just kind of talk about this is how I'd like the calls to run for the next few weeks, um, just to get it out in the air, because some people said they were confused. This, this week coming up starting tomorrow, week three, is going to be a week off. Did that make sense to everybody? Right. I thought it was going to be a break. Enough, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a break. I was under the impression it was the week of... Say it again? Well, I was under the impression it was the July 4th week. No? No. I, it's going to actually be starting tomorrow until okay. the 24th. Um, it's going to be a, I mean, a break week. You can continue to go on with the questions and things like that in the syllabus, but there's not going to be conference calls. Gotcha. Um, we're going to let everybody catch up a little bit, and then we're going to start again on the 24th. I'm actually certifying a lot of the trainers that were in the first course um, next week and it's just it's just really it's hard for me to focus on two separate groups and two separate things and besides the fact I'm actually moving on Friday <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to work in a week of break and I thought what better week to work in than the week I'm moving so uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing but we'll catch up with week three starting on the 24th then if that works for everybody Sounds great. okay cool well, um, what I want to do tonight, uh, first of all, did anyone have any issues opening up the PowerPoints? No. Nope. They're okay? Okay, are you guys able to, to have them open right now while you're on the call? Sure. Okay. Then that's great. So what we're going to do um, each week then, we're going to go through, oh, Phil wants me to call him now. Hold on. Okay, Phil's going to join us by phone as well for some reason. Not sure how. Okay. Um, let's try. So we're, this is going to be really high tech because I've got Ben on my home line and I'm going to have Phil on my iPhone. This should be this should be good. And I know there's got to be a better way to do this, but I don't know what it is yet. Hmm. I'm trying to do it again. That's okay. Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get started though. Okay. Okay. So um, so basically, what I said, as I said, what we're gonna do each week, we're gonna work through a different section, a different principle in the workshop. And your questions, your answers have been great. Um, you guys are really doing a good job. The reason for the discussion questions isn't for me to see how much you know. It's for you to relate these principles to your everyday lives because that's where you make a big connection with the audience. So. That's really important because when you're talking to an audience, are you there, Phil? I'm going to hang up because my phone's Yeah, down. yeah, I'm going to hang okay. up. Okay. So when you're talking to an audience, a lot of the feedback that we get after we do these workshops where the, um, the audience fills out an evaluation and they la let us know how we did, and one of the questions says the best part of the workshop, and 99% of the time they say the best part of the workshop were the stories the trainer shared and the, the real life examples and the interaction and the discussion. So what I like to do, a lot of times when I train new trainers, um, I find that everybody is very studious, if I can use that word. You know, everyone learns the principles, they memorize all the facts, they're so excited, they go to give the presentation and they're going through the PowerPoint and they have, I mean, every fact, every detail, but there's no personality into it and the connections and the real life stories they might toss in every once in a while but to, to be able to take each of these principles 
and really make it real for the people. And when you're telling a story about a kid that you coached or a situation that happened or a, a you know a bad official's call that you kept your mouth shut and you ended up winning the game anyway, and those are the stories that the audience really relates to. And that's why PCA is different. It's different than um, just a nuts and bolts workshop that people have gone to. Um, they're all coaches. They've been to a ton of coaching clinics and they've been to so many things about the X's and O's and how to coach soccer or baseball or football. But when it comes to what we're doing, we're sharing the best practices of professional coaches and college coaches and athletes and sports psychologists. And this is something that the audience isn't used to hearing. So that's why the discussion questions I really am asking. Someone, someone in this course, I'm not going to tell who it is, but somebody said, um, is that answer okay? I just told you a story of a time I filled the kid's tank. And I said, that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to make these real to you. So um, if anybody's curious, that's what I'm looking for. Not just, you know, filling the emotional tank means doing a 5 to 1 ratio and that type of thing. <laughs> so does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to do tonight was really talk about the introduction. And the introduction to these workshops is probably one of the most important things you can do. Because, um, have you all been to a workshop, everybody that's on this? Anybody not yeah. been to a workshop? I have Kelly. Okay. Um, the most important thing, I think, when you walk into a room and you have, let's say, 30 coaches, just for example. Um, some nights it might be 10 coaches, some nights it might be 100 coaches. But one of the things that is really important is to start with a bang, and that's what we call it on the smack recipe, is to get that audience's attention right off the bat. So one of the things that we say is you need to get them interacting, you need to get them engaged, and they have to have a purpose for being there. Now, I know a lot of you have presented before, and you might, you might already know this, so I'm not trying to tell you things you already know, but what, what I have found in my five years of presenting workshops is that a lot of times you're going to have coaches coming, um, I should say 50% of the coaches coming don't want to be there. Um, they really don't want to hear what you have to say because a lot of times these workshops are at the end of the day, they've coached all day, they're exhausted, it's late at night, and the last thing they want to do is hear how they could be coaching better. So the other hand, the other half of the people that are there are so excited so enthusiastic, they have their notebook, they're ready to walk out of there and hit the ground running. So to bring that group together and sort of cohesiveness is, is our challenge. So what I asked, um, and I'd love to hear you do this, but what I'd like to do tonight is just see if you can start with a quick introduction. And, and that's why I asked you guys the last discussion question was, why, are you, why do you want to be a trainer? What brought you to PCA? Because that's sometimes the best story you can tell. And it says 60 second story. I've never been able to keep it to exactly 60 seconds. Um, one of the biggest critiques of trainers is we talk too much. So, you know, if I say 60 seconds, you might talk for three minutes and that's okay. But if I say give a three minute introduction, it becomes a 10 minute introduction. So um, that's why we say a 60 second start with a bang. So if anybody would like to share this, I was going to just tell you the intro that I use many times. And then if you guys would like to go from there and, you know, try it, try it out. That's why these Google Hangouts are so effective because mm -hmm. you have an opportunity. You have people watching you, sort of like it was an audience in a workshop, and we can sort of give each other feedback. So does that sound okay with everybody? Sounds good. That's great. Okay. And, and here's Ben if you need to see him. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I have a few different introductions I use depending on the audience that it is. For this sake, I'm just going to pretend that you are um, – uh, like a youth, um, a youth sports association, all different sports um, coming together. Probably, let's say U15 and below, and you're all coming here with different sport backgrounds, um, different age levels that you coach. So the partner would um, introduce me, and that's where the bio comes in, and say, you know, hi, this is Kelly Kratz from Positive Coaching Alliance. She's here tonight, and read my little. She played field hockey at St. Joe's, and basketball and lacrosse and you know give them my whole bio and then they say okay let's welcome Kelly and everybody you know claps and then you're on so what I usually do is start off with and let's see if I can just show you real quick here what I usually do is just start off with the very first opening slide on the PowerPoint which is this one right here which I think I should be able to flip back and forth let's see how how good I do with this can you see that slide yes Yep. Yep. 
that's the one that I start off with. So while that slide is on, um, I, I thank everybody, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pretend that you guys are my audience here. So let me go back to being live, so you can see me. There we are. Okay. So um, thanks everybody for coming tonight. I really appreciate you giving up your night. I know time is precious right now, and all of you have probably come from a long day of coaching or a long day of work. So first of all, I want to thank you. Um, one of the things that I always like to find out is first impressions. Um, how many of you have ever been to a Positive Coaching Alliance workshop before? Anyone? I've been to one. Okay. Okay, great. Well, my question for you is when you were told tonight that you were invited to a Positive Coaching Alliance workshop, what are some of the thoughts that come into your mind when you hear positive coaching? And, and don't hold back, whatever, good or bad, whatever you're thinking, what comes into your mind when you think about, great, I'm going to have to sit for 90 minutes and listen to this woman talk about positive coaching? What are some of I, your first impressions? Well, I thought it was going to be all goody-goody, you know, two-shoes type of stuff. I didn't okay. Think, uh, you know, I didn't know if it was going to be something that was going to really better my players. Okay. What else? I always thought it would be about um, uh, less about uh, competition and more about participation. Mm -hmm. And okay. and that makes me that that makes it kind of a would make it kind of a weak presentation to somebody like me. Okay. All right. Anybody else? What am I going to really learn? What'd you say? Say it again. What am I going to learn at this thing? What am I going to learn at this thing? Exactly. Well, I sat where you are as a coach um, five years ago, and it had been a long lacrosse practice. I was coaching high school lacrosse at the time, and I was told it was mandatory that I come to a Positive Coaching Alliance workshop. Now, first of all, the word mandatory didn't like that at all because I was a young coach. I had a lot of great ideas. Our record was pretty good, and at the time, I was also a third grade teacher, and I sat there at this mandatory workshop and I said to myself positive coaching and I thought very similar to what you're saying oh great everybody's a winner everybody's gonna get a prize everybody's gonna get a high five and what I found when I started teaching I could not wait to to play games with the kids I was teaching I was teaching third grade so the very first day of school I went to gym class with my class of kids I was so excited I got down to the gym and the gym teacher said um, are you going to join us? And I said, yeah, I want to join you today. What are you doing? And he said, we're playing a game called Snowball Fights. And I said, Snowball Fights? What are Snowball Fights? I know you guys lost the video here. I'm not sure why. I think it'll come back. I said, what are Snowball Fights? And he said, well, we get we have these big pom-poms, and we take one group and put them on this side, and we take one group and we put them on that side, and they throw these big snowball pom-poms at each other, and when they get tugged, they have to freeze like a snowman until somebody lets them go. And I said, well, it sounds kind of like dodgeball. And he said, oh, yeah, but we can't call it dodgeball. Dodgeball is way too competitive. And <laughs> then I found, as I started going through, uh, I, I jumped down and I started coaching six-year-olds that same year. And in this league, I, I was coaching soccer, which I had never played in my life. I played competitive field hockey, basketball, and lacrosse. Never played soccer before, but I thought I can do it. So I find out in this league, these six-year-olds I was coaching, number one, they weren't going to keep score. Number two, everybody had to have equal playing time. And number three, they get a trophy bigger than me at the end of the season just for coming. And at the end of the season, I found out that a lot of these kids, any time they didn't have the ball, they were sad. They were depressed. Every time they made a mistake, it was all their fault. And, and I noticed a change in the culture of the kids because at the end of the season, these huge trophies that they got, they were so excited about the trophies that they won. And I sat there and said, one, you know, somehow something was going on with me, and I thought, where's the competition? So when I sat at this workshop, the very first thing that the trainer said to me was, how many of you like to win? And I'm going to ask you that question. How many of you like to win? Oh, Raise your hand. Absolutely. Like oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you probably wouldn't have this job as a coach right now if you didn't like to win, because I can guarantee it does not pay enough to keep you where you are. So winning was big for me. But the second thing that this trainer said was, how would you like me to share with you some proven methods from some of the best of the best in the business on how your team can win more, you can have more fun as a coach, you can get more out of the kids, and get parents off your back? And I was like, done, sold, sign me up, where, where do I join? And then he said, wouldn't that be great if there was a place, a, a fairy tale place where this could happen? And I thought, yeah, man, that's the team I want to coach, that's awesome. And he said, there is a place like that, and it's called your field where you're coaching or your pool or your basketball court. It can happen. 
What we don't know yet, and what a lot of people haven't learned yet, is how to get them there. So in the next hour and a half, I'm going to share with you some of the coolest things that I heard, some amazing tools that changed the way I coach, that also changed the way I parent, and I'd love to share those with you. This is a workshop, so I do not want to do all the talking. I would like you to share with me some of your ideas. I've only coached and played the sports that I've played, but I get more information from you coaches than anyone. So I'm going to ask for your permission to steal them and share them with anybody I find. Is that all right with everybody? Sure. <laughs> all right. So I'd like to start off, and this is again, okay, so that's my intro pretty much. First thing I do is get everybody up and off their feet. So what I would do to all of you, and you can't really do it while you're sitting there, but what I would do is say, okay, I'm going to ask all of you right now. I want you to stand up, and you're going to form a circle around the room, okay, a semicircle. If this is your first year of coaching, you're going to be standing on that side of the room. If you've been coaching for five years, you're going to stand there, 10 years there, 15 years there. I want you to make a big U shape facing me. And when you get there, I'm going to ask you to turn to the person next to you, introduce yourself, and tell them how many years you've been coaching and what you coach. And then I say, okay, go. And everybody gets up, and they stand in the room, across the room, and they introduce themselves. Now, the second slide on the PowerPoint is the Steve Young video. And so that's the very next thing I show. While everybody's standing, I've gotten them up out of their seats. Um, if there are less than 30 people... I have them go right around the room and say, my name is Kelly, I'm coaching um, U8 soccer right now, I've been coaching for 12 years. My name is Christine, I'm coaching you know, U15, five years. I just have them all go around. I do that for two reasons. One of the reasons is because people like to be recognized for as many years as they've been coaching. A lot of times those coaches that have been coaching for 30 years, they want to tell people, oh, I've been coaching for 30 years and I'm, you know, they, they, people like to acknowledge that. The other reason is, when I'm in a workshop and let's say a baseball question comes up, I personally have never played baseball. So if a baseball question comes up in the audience, I can use that audience as a resource and I know exactly who it is and where to find them. So that's really helpful as a presenter to know who your audience is. So after they do that, I show the Steve Young video, which have you all seen the Steve Young video? Yes. Okay. So then after that, I would say, all right, what did you notice there? Who does Steve Young credit his his love of sports and his success in football too. You guys remember who he said? Yeah, the coaches that were uh, early in his childhood. Yeah, his earliest childhood coaches. Now, my experience was pretty funny because I graduated from college playing field hockey and basketball, I mean, sorry, field hockey and lacrosse at a D1 school. Right out of college, I was recruited to be a college basketball coach. And I was, it was a Division II school coaching college basketball. I did that for two years. Then, the following year, it was a little far away from my house, so the following year, I started coaching high school basketball. And then the following year, I coached high school basketball and high school lacrosse. And then, years after that, I started coaching my kids. So I started coaching youth soccer and then youth lacrosse, and I'm still coaching youth lacrosse today. So people have said to me, is that a demotion when you go from coaching college to now <laughs> coaching six-year-olds? And I, and I ask anybody that's ever gone from coaching at the high level to coaching six-year-olds, which one's easier? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'd rather be with those college kids any day because these six-year-olds are a challenge. But the power that you have coaching these youth at such a young age and the influence you have, as Steve Young said, on the trajectory of their life, you can't find it anywhere else. Most of those kids that you're coaching will listen to you and believe what you say more than their own parents. So you have a very, very strong influence on these kids. And so next question I have is, in your life, who was that coach that was so influential to you? And that's when I move to the next slide. The next slide says, who was the most influential coach in your life? Mm -hmm. So if you remember, I have them all standing up in the room. They're still standing. Okay, what I'll tell them to do, and I lost that. Did you lose my video again? Nope. I don't know why that oh, happened. Yeah. yeah we okay. Um, as they're still standing, I'll say, okay, now what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to walk across the room, and I want you to match up with somebody at a different experience level than you, and I want you to find somebody that has the same eye color as yours. And go up, shake their hand, introduce yourself, and I want you to tell them about the most influential coach you ever had in your life. And I'm going to give you about two minutes to do that. So, again, the group is interacting. They're talking. They have about two minutes to do that. They're mixing with somebody they don't know. Sometimes I say shoe color. Sometimes I say someone you don't know their last name. I'll, I force people to find a partner. I found adults are even worse than kids 
<laughs> when you tell adults to stand up <laughs> and find a partner or volunteer, nobody wants to do it. But if I'm ever asking a question and I get no volunteers, I will say, okay, whose birthday is today? Whose birthday is closest to today? And somebody in the room will always raise their hand and go, oh, mine was last week. I'm like, great, you're my volunteer. Come on up. And it just, it's, I do the same thing with third graders and it works brilliantly on adults. So <laughs> anything you can do to not put people on the spot works really well. Mm. So then I'll give them a few minutes. They'll talk with their partner. And here's another thing that I also tell them. One of the things that we like to do in PCA is we like to embed lessons that you can use right away in your coaching. One of the things that we found from psychology studies, and you don't need a psychologist to tell you that, kids at a young age are very self-absorbed. Is that news to anyone? <laughs> when you have a bunch of little kids on your team, who do they want to talk about the most? Themselves. themselves, right. They want to tell you all about themselves. We want them to become a team. We want them to be aware of the other kids around them. So what I'm going to do with you is something I would do to my team. You all got to meet with a partner and you got to talk about the most influential coach you've ever had. What I would like you to do right now is share with me a story that you heard. So I'll do this at practice. When we'll come in from a drill and instead of saying, okay, who scored a goal or who got that pass or who was able to make that shot, I'll say, who noticed someone else doing that? Whatever the skill is, who noticed someone else that had a great follow through on that layup? Who noticed somebody else stopped that ball right in front of them with control? And that's a great way to fill tanks. We're going to talk about that later. But all of a sudden, the team you're building team cohesion because the kids are watching each other. So, and I have the adults around the room. Okay, somebody share for me three people, influential stories you heard. And then I'll get three volunteers. Again, another silly thing. If nobody raises their hand, I grab, this is my flying monkey. It sounds really silly. I also have a ball that I use, depending on the group. I will say, okay, nobody wants to share. I'm going to toss the monkey. Somebody catch it. I'll throw it across the room. Some guy will catch it. And I'll say, okay, share for me the story your partner told you. These all sound really ridiculous, but it's amazing how hard it is for adults to share in a room of people. Once they break the ice, then it's a little bit better. So they'll share their most influential story. They're still standing. They're all mixed around the room. I'll say, oh, thank you so much. That was great. I'll link the story they tell me to one of the principals. So if somebody tells me about their, um, you know, their middle school uh, track coach who did a great job really making them feel wonderful and complimenting them and, and really making them feel confident and excited and they had a lot of fun and they're telling that story, I might say, wow, what a great tank filler that coach was. I'm putting out the terms when they don't even know what they mean yet so that later on in the workshop they'll come back or or they'll tell another story and I'll say what a great example of honoring the game that's really cool thanks for sharing that because I'm validating what the audience is telling me mm -hmm. so then I'll have them all get quiet for a second and I'll say okay I have an assignment for you the only written assignment I'm gonna give you tonight I want you to think and I click on the uh, the PowerPoint the next question says how do you want to be remembered and I'll tell the group someday hopefully not soon you're gonna hang up your whistle and you're not gonna be able to coach anymore and at that time, I'm going to have a new group of coaches coming in. And maybe some of those coaches were ones that coached that you coached, which is very cool when you have different generations of coaches coming through. I'm going to ask you, when I ask that same question to those coaches 10, 15 years from now, who was the most influential coach? They're going to say your name. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to know is, what are they going to say about you? Why are you the most influential coach they ever had? And I just want you to just think about it quietly for about 30 seconds. What do you want them to remember about you? And then what I'm going to ask you to do quietly is go back to your seat and in the Power of Double Goal coaching book that you all have on your seat, there's a blank page in the front and I'm going to ask you to write down that one sentence. How do you want to be remembered as a coach? Okay, go ahead. And then they all quietly go back to their seats. I have the audience's captive attention. I've already had them up and out of their seats laughing a little bit, sharing, but now I have their quiet attention to go through the next couple slides, which are kind of the, the commercial of PCA, the map, the charter, sort of the statistics behind PCA. Right. And, uh, and we'll go through some of that next week um, when we start really getting into the PowerPoint presentation. But that's pretty much my intro, and that usually takes somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. Um, I usually say if you break the workshop presentation, you've got 90 minutes usually total. I usually say it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do the intro activity. If you spend at least 15 minutes on each principle with some question time worked in there, 
and then 15 minutes for closing and scenarios, that usually comes out, it gives you some leeway because someone might go off on a tangent and think of another you know, topic they want to talk about. Your group might be really passionate about a question and that might lead to a discussion. Mm -hmm. But the part that you're actually presenting, if you keep it to about 15 minute chunks, it usually keeps the pace pretty well for a workshop. All right, I'm done talking. Would any of you like to uh, put you on the spot here and volunteer? You don't have to go through all that that I just did, but just your quick you know, introduction story, your quick 60 seconds, start with a bang. Why are you here? Why do you want the audience to be here, and why should they bother to listen to you? And we're really good tank fillers, so don't worry about uh, <laughs> Because we learn from our mistakes here, and we flush them. Yeah. I'll, I'll give a I'll go. Uh, Thanks, Gray. Okay, Thanks. Phil. Let's hear it for Gray. All right. Did I did I beat you to it, Phil, or did you beat me to it? I don't I'm know. Sure. But if you want to go, go ahead. If not, I'll go. It's up to you, pal. No, no, I, that's fine. I'll I'll take a swing at it. I, it's right. uh, it's always good. Well, okay. So I I. Thanks to everyone for, for coming here tonight, and, and uh, I'm really um, excited to um, present to you and, and talk to you about the PCA message. Um, how many of you have ever had the opportunity to be on a winning team? And what was that like to be on that winning team? And then when you took your, um, your time to, to think about um, your answer, also ask yourself, uh, are you are you still able to coach as a as a as a winner now, or uh, is, are there things that uh, in, in your local associations in your coaching that don't allow you to add that competitive bond? And and I think the big thing with PCA that attracted me as a trainer and now in front of you tonight to present is the ability to teach winning and and also teach you sport the lifelong lessons and combine those two things instead of having to separate. A good story that I've had in the past is, is that I coach hockey, ice hockey, and, and so many times um, the kids all get a participatory trophy at the end of the year, but none of them realize or understand the importance of what it took to, to, to get that trophy because it's just assumed that they would get it. And, and as a PCA trainer, I want to try and bring the message that not only can uh, kids strive for winning in competition, but they can also learn the importance of what it is to be a winner and why it's important to be a competitor and also how to be a good teammate and a good person in life and a better person as a better athlete. So I hope we can spend the next 90 minutes, and I'll try and keep it quick and lively for you. Uh, I might even get my flying monkey out um, in, order <laughs> to, uh, in order to make this an enjoyable uh, learning experience for all of us. There you go. Right. Great job, Greg. Great job. All right. Thanks, Bill. Very nice. Nice job. What would you guys like about that? If you were an audience and Greg walked into the room and did that, how are you feeling right now? Well, I thought he brought great energy right yeah. off the bat. He had a lot of energy, very energized. Uh, I would just like, you know, one thing I would like to add, Greg, you know, I thought your energy was great. Just, you may want to wait, pause for just a moment to allow people to respond. Um, give some people some breathing room. And even if, you know, you don't get a response right away, just give people a moment to really think about what you're saying. Yep, that's good. I, you know what, I think, Phil, that's one of my, my problems is that I, I tend to uh, rattle on a little bit, which which talking to Ruben and to Kelly and to a few others seems to be one of the things that really you need to work on is to keep it brief, short spurts, and give people a chance to respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I thought I think it's great. You you just had a smile on your face the whole time, which shows me that you're excited about what you're saying. And I think that's right there. If you're if you're energetic and you're excited about what you're saying, you're going to get the audience excited. It's amazing how you can actually your facial expressions can change the facial expressions of the people in the audience. And I think I think that's great. I agree with Phil's comment though. Like you did kind of keep going and going and going. You might want to just mm -hmm. slow it down a little bit. But uh, but I thought it was great. Okay. Thanks. I I would echo that. The very first tagline you sort of stole from an idea that I had because you said. Anybody ever been on a winning team? And um, I think that's probably what I'll start with. I instantly think of state championships, national championships, league, youth, club championships. And I, that immediately gets people fired up thinking about it, their stories, um, their interests in those experiences. And so I think that's a right off the bat, you've got a kind of a winning question. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
That's great. Thanks, Christine. Yep. All right. Anybody else want to give it a shot? I'll try. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you, Kelly, for that uh, kind introduction. As uh, she mentioned, I've been coaching and training students for nearly 20 years now. And um, just to get a gauge of where everybody is, how many of you have heard about the Positive Coaching Alliance? A couple of you. What have you heard? Um, I've heard that they're from Stanford University. You're from Stanford University, yes. Anything else? I heard Jim Thompson is the leader. He is, he is a great leader. Well, coming into this, coming into this session, though, what was you? What were some of your thoughts that were running through your mind when you when you heard I was, you were going to be attending a session, the Positive Coaching Alliance? What were some of the thoughts that were going through your mind? That somebody thinks I'm too competitive and I'm not nice enough to my kids. <laughs> Competition is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. But we do want to be kind to our children. Absolutely. Anybody else? Winning isn't important. Winning isn't important. Well, we don't believe that here at the Positive Coaching Alliance. But, you know, when you think about a positive coach, you know, if you think about one of the most positive coaches you've ever had, how would you describe that coach? Mm. Uh, really caring, really cared about us as as people, not just as players. Yeah. A mentor. A mentor. And as these mentors Trust. cared for you, how did that make you feel as a, as a player? More confident. More confident. Anybody else? Secure. Yeah, more confident, more secure. You know, this is one of the things that I try to express as I'm coaching. When I started doing coaching and training, that wasn't always the issue. I didn't always do that for my players in the beginning and honestly as a player I didn't always feel that way because my coaches they used to coach they the motivation they use honestly was fear and you know as I got older that's kind of what I use because I learned it honestly from them and you know one of my favorite expressions when my team wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing or they weren't playing up to their potential was we're gonna run and we're gonna run till the cows come home you know and I got, you know one day an individual came over to me and says, you know what, by doing it that way, you're never going to get the best effort out of your players. So I started making changes, started making tweaks and adjustments. And then years later, a positive coaching alliance coach came up to me, attended one of our camps, and she said, you know, you're starting to use a lot of the philosophies from PCA. And she's like, you ought to go check them out and attend one of their uh, conferences. And, you know, I started thinking about that positive coaching alliance. What does that mean? I mean... Am I gonna, is this one of these groups that are, you know everyone wins a trophy, you know everyone's a winner and everyone's going to you know, win these trophies and you know as I went through the process I discovered that's not always the case. Look, I knew as a coach, you know everyone doesn't win you know, and everyone doesn't get a trophy. But as I started going through this process, you know I started learning. You know these are they're teaching some really critical things and they have some scientific research to back them up. Now who here? I assume all of you love to win. I gather that. But to, in order for you to win, you have to create an incredible experience you know, for your players. How many of you are interested in creating a phenomenal experience for your kids this season? A couple of you. Just a couple of you? How many really want to create an incredible experience for your kids to get the best performance out of them? A couple yes. more. Well, this is good. And this is what, honestly, this is what this is all, all about as we continue to move forward here. We're going to show you some tools and techniques. So I get it. I know it's a long day, and I appreciate your time. But all I'm asking you to do while you're here over the next hour and a half is to open up your minds to some of the tools and techniques that we're going to be talking about. All right. That's, like That's good. Thanks. That was great. That was great. What did you guys like? Kelly, uh, I had a hard, I'm having a hard time hearing clearly just because of the connection. Okay. But in both instances, I could feel, I could just feel through the phone, I could feel the energy, and I can't see either, but <laughs> I can, I can see the, the excitement and the passion, or I could feel that as well. So I thought both of them did a great job with that, just uh, kind of getting that energy out there and, and getting their passion to come through. That's great. If you can feel energy through the phone, you guys are doing a good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, what else did you like about Phil's? Uh, Great Phil, I, I, question. Sorry, go, ahead. go ahead, Christine. Uh, just, again, thought-provoking questions, I think, that will create good dialogue and, and feedback response. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. How about you, Greg? What were you going to say? Confidence, too. Confidence, yep. Yeah, very good confidence. Yeah, I like the way you use your hands. Um, you know, you're 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 you um, definitely are able to elaborate on points. Um, you're you're you know you, you do a great job building the energy, but I also think you do a great job in sort of um, captivating and and having people you know pay attention to what you're saying. Oh, thanks, thanks, Greg. Absolutely. Um, I put down too. You you did a great job. You hit on two points that we always bring up at all the PCA workshops and. Um, you know, I don't know if you even knew it yet, but one of the things, Eric Eisendrath is another one of the lead trainers. His intro, and, I, and hopefully he'll get on one of these calls one of these nights to do it, but his intro always stems from motivation. And what's the number one thing that is a roadblock to peak performance? That's the very first question he asks. What stops your players from giving their best performance every single time? Does anybody know Fear. the answer to that? Fear. Fear. Okay. Fear of making mistakes. So yeah. you brought that up, and and a lot of coaches I've been challenged over the years about the whole you know running is punishment, running is motivation. Um, <laughs> is putting fear in your players the best way to motivate them? And I've had coaches say to me, it works. We've won championships, and I say back to them, you've won a championship in spite of that, not because of that. Right. And there's a big difference there. Think about how much better you could be, and think of how much more exciting, more fun your players would have. So I like the way you brought that up. The other thing, the other key that I think is fantastic that we're going to bring up later, you had the coaches think about how uh, how did that coach make them feel. Mm -hmm. Anytime you ask somebody to think about how did you feel at the moment or what did your players look like or what do kids that are playing for a positive coach look like versus a negative coach, that's again, that makes it real for them. Then you're not just giving them a lecture, you're actually asking them to think in their mind of the players they're coaching right now and what they're looking like and what their actions are doing and that's showing the cause and effect relationship between the way the coach is acting and the way the players are responding and that's huge that's what we're asking them to do so I thought you did a great job there and I also like open your mind because I say that a lot too just keep oh. an open mind about all this so I nice. thought that was great alright do you want to give it a shot Christine? sure I will um, thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that intro, um, and it's great to be here with all of you tonight. Um, really looking forward to kind of getting to know you all, and I certainly appreciate you taking the time um, on your evening. I know we're all likely tired with with long hours, and a um, oftentimes my my second job starts you know after five o'clock, so I, I know you probably all feel the same. Um, first of all, just to kind of shout some questions out to you all, um, how many of you have heard about PCA? what it is, anything about it. A few of you, a few of you. I will be totally honest with you and I had not. I had zero experience until a few months ago when I ran into an old college and uh, high school and college uh, friend of mine uh, the last 20 years who got involved with this program. And Before I even knew, we were sitting there chatting about maybe some of the glory days, some of our kids now playing in the glory days and how much of my life has been consumed by my sports still to this day, whether it's through my kids, our old experiences, people we still maintain contact with. And she could just instantly, I said, Kelly, I just feel like I, I need to be doing something more than you know what I've been doing and talking about some of the, where everybody is in the world today, our teammates, what are they doing with their lives? What are they, you know, what have they experienced their successes, whether it be, you know, in sports or outside of it. And she said, hey, hold on, hold on that, you know, hold that thought. And she um, texted a, a, a PCA uh, member and said, you need to get involved in this. And here I am. And I think one of the, the things, the reason why I am, and she just kind of maybe saw my, my enthusiasm just ab about talking about youth sports and our kids and, and the whole environment, um, I, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> so here I am as I sit here and share with you. But one of the other things I would talk about um, when I ask you guys about PCA is how many of you guys can remember winning a state championship, a, a club championship, you know, a, a national championship of some sort? How many of you? What that, and what that feels like. I'm sure we probably have some great stories on, you know, the last minute heroics, et cetera, et cetera. And how many of you like to, you know, to recall those days and, and um, those last minute heroics, if you will? Mm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and the other thing I asked too is, you know, in, in chatting with my friend, how many of you as coaches keep in contact with former coaches? Maybe and why? Why do you? Any of you? Yeah. I do. 
Yep. Just to, to gain some knowledge, you know, to, when I'm in a certain situation, I like to get get advice from people who've had more experience. Okay. Anybody, um, former players, uh, still keep in contact with you that you've coached? Yeah. A lot of my players still I stay in touch. I have a player that's now coaching, uh, coaching high school lacrosse, and my daughter was actually playing against her as a coach. Like, she was the opposing team. And in the middle of the game, she, the, my former player came over to me and said, you know, and I was, she was talking to me in the middle of the game, and I just thought, this is really weird that she's old enough to coach high school, and she was on my field. But she came over to ask me advice about something during the game where she was playing my daughter. And right. I was like, I'm not telling you anything. Stop. I'll talk to you after the game. But it was, it was pretty cool. Well, those are some of the things I want us to talk about and maybe some of the reasons why. Why we've maintained contact with former coaches and why those players maintain contact with you. I think that's um, a big part of maybe what we can bridge together. If you think about what our goal is at PCA, some of the principles that we'll talk about tonight, is not just the winning scoreboard and the and the the moments where we can recall the victories, but why those kids, why those, and why our former coaches um, have made an impact on us and what we're doing. So I'd like to just kind of leave it with that, some thought-provoking things that we can chat about uh, as we move through the course today. Great. Awesome. All right, sounds good. What'd you guys get out of that? What 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 stood out at you? What Christine just did? Yeah, I thought Christine. I thought your pacing your pacing was great. It's very smooth, um, and I like the fact that you brought you made me reflect. You took me back in time to some of the positive moments where I really enjoyed sport. And you know when I, and and you made me think about you know when these guys twenty years from now when they look back, what are they truly going to remember? Is it going to be a positive experience? Good. Thanks. Uh, I thought I thought you did a great job connecting with all of us, just not only in terms of making us reflect, but also um, your angle was different than anything that Phil or I had done, uh, or Kelly, really. Um, so it was great. It was refreshing to, you know, support, especially with that you're ad-libbing it. You know, you're coming up with this stuff on the fly. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to write all that down and maybe hopefully videotape <laughs> Kelly. <that way. laughs> You can watch it later. It's recorded. You can oh, watch it on YouTube. Yes. Um, I really like the way too that I, the angle of I never thought about I never thought about the coaches I remembered and, and why do I remember them? Because there's definitely some that stick out more than others. And I thought that was a great way to bring it in. You know, because later you're going to have them think about their most influential coach. I thought that was awesome. I also really like the way you shared with them that you had never heard of PCA, you had no experience at all, and it came from a friend. You know, introducing you to it. So. Um, that's one of the big things because PCA really spreads by word of mouth. Yep. So, um, and, and most people that want to get involved with PCA, whether as a trainer or supporter, they say, you know, I just can't get enough of this stuff. I mean, this is awesome. And that's how I started as well. I was like, wait, there's an organization that's actually doing this? I, I want to work with them. I don't care who it is. This is what I want to do. So okay. that was really cool. And by the way, I am going to call Kelly to see if she will get on one of these calls. Oh, I hope she does. Yeah. Yeah, I already bugged her about it. I was like, you have got to join one of these calls and tell me one of your stories because her energy is like through the roof. So yeah. she's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. All right. We are we're at nine o'clock. Ben, did you want to share your story? I don't want to cut you off, or do you want to wait till you're live on a hangout another time? Yeah, let me I'm just not in a great environment. I don't know. I'm having trouble hearing and speaking, so that's let me, fine. Uh, let me wait till I can get in front of everybody and get on the computer. Okay. That's yeah. fine. That's great. Well, listen, I don't want to. What, another rule of my workshops is I never hold people over the time that they're told they're allowed to leave. Because there's nothing worse than telling you that you're going to be at a workshop and you are done at 8:30 and the presenter is still talking at 8:45. My goal is to always get people finished and out the door 10 minutes early. Is always my goal. And I tell people, okay, we're done. I'm stopping. I am. I said I'm getting paid the big bucks till nine o'clock. Is what I say. So if you want to stay and ask questions, I'm here. The rest of you, you know, have a great night and you know, thank you for coming. But I am going to stick to my 9 o'clock time with you guys, too. Um, so the next Google Hangout call that we're going to do is going to be on the 26th. So you've got this week skipping, next Monday skipping, and then so the next the week three calls will be on the 26th and the 30th. And I'll cool. send that out in an email again. Real quick, though, before you go, my other question. I have Google Groups set up so that you receive one email a day. That's a summary of what everybody, you know, kind of wrote in for their questions. Um, right. If any of you would like to change that so that you get emails, you know, as they come, because sometimes I type in announcements 
and you won't get them until the end of the day. If anybody wants me to change that, I will, but otherwise I will just leave it. Are you guys okay with just getting that one summary email a day? I like the summary. Okay. I am. Yeah, fine. Okay. If you ever wanted to change, please let me know. But I thought that was a little bit better than getting. I, I mean, I get all the emails as soon as they come in. But uh, if you want that change, let me know. All right. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, if anybody wants to stay on, if you have any questions, that's great. But if you guys want to go start your night, feel free. Great. Yeah, Kelly. Right, okay. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Okay, Kelly, night. you said one question. Yep. Go ahead. Um, just trying to. I was trying to navigate my way through this and trying to figure out. So you sent me an extra. Um, call in or invite rather, yeah. and I was able to tap into that. But I admit, for some reason, I missed the first one. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, I'm not know, sure. I, I heard that you and Greg were talking together, and I wasn't yeah. really sure how that was working. So I, I sent Greg an individual invitation, and I sent you an individual invitation. That's how I got on. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not really sure what what I'm able to do. What I did was in the original call, I invited the entire group. Um, okay, so, so but when I go onto like plusgoogle.com or whatever, and I can see you know the um, you know the page there. I did, where was the like I don't see the invite there. I don't know. I think it comes literally like through Hangout. It will say you have been invited. If you click on the little Hangout green speech bubble, it'll okay. say you have been invited to. The, however, you you answer this call is how right. they come. Okay. Okay. As far as I know. Now the hard thing is I don't see what you see on your end. Right. So. I I don't even know how exactly. Greg and I ended up on the same call, whatever. But that's yeah. Fine. Well, that's what I thought was funny because Greg joined before you did, and he said, Phil's out in cyberspace somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure where he is. It was crazy. Okay. Yeah. Well, th thanks anyway. Have a great night, All right. okay? Thanks, All right. Phil. You too. Bye-bye. All, -bye. Right. All right. Thanks for joining us. Good night.